Jesus in the family. Happy, happy, oh. Happy, happy, oh. Happy, happy, oh. Jesus in the family. Happy, happy, oh. Happy, happy, oh. When Jesus in the family, happy, happy, oh. Oh, happy, happy, oh. Oh, happy, happy, oh. When Jesus in the family, Happy, happy, oh, happy, happy, oh, when Jesus in the family, happy, happy, oh, oh, happy, happy, oh, oh, happy, happy, oh, when Jesus in the family, happy, happy, oh, Happy, happy, oh, oh. Good morning, friends. Depending on your time, wherever you are watching us, it's this time of the season again for our family series. Uh, we appreciate you. Please uh, tune in with us in the YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and all our platforms. We are glad to come your way today. Uh, like we've been told, our family series has been adjusted to second Saturday of every month. So it's once now in every month. Please follow us and our God will do you well. Uh, Sister Beloved is not available today because of other family commitments. She sends her greeting. Amen. We also want to uh, pray the good God. I will bring peace in our society, in our community, in our nations and Africa. A lot of evil has been happening of recent uh, killings here and there. Recent ones in deep blue Soweto, where eight dead bodies has been confirmed just in a very short period of time. And the climax of it all is Mr. Nyati, who was born alive, alive petrol uh, spread over his body, tied up and lighting up to burn to death. We sympathize with the family, Mrs. Sinyati, and everyone who is involved or who are affected by this, and even the other seven people who also has been killed in this season and period of time. We are just coming out from the COVID demon that has really destroyed the economy of the whole world. And our government just released us from the lockdown level one. We feel restrictions still on. We are just trying to get up to face our daily lives, praying to God to revive the economy of our nation, the nations of Africa and the world at large, even as we pray for God's restoration in Russia and Ukraine, where there is steady killing going on even at this point in time. We rise to the shock of what is happening in deep blue Soweto, Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, this week. We want to plead with our brothers and sisters to please lay down their arms. We've lost a lot of lives during COVID. We can't afford to keep losing souls, especially the ones that are being caused by us. We want to plead that please there's other ways of expressing our anger, our grievances, and drawing the government attention to do what is right than killing a fellow human being. It's not right. The blood is rising up to God for vengeance. And this brings the wrath of God upon us as individuals and as a nation. Why urging our government 
So please look into the grievances of our people, the citizens of our great nation, and putting things in the right place so that those who want to fix their documents, when they go to our home affairs, they will have access, they will be assisted. They will not be talked from pillar to post, thereby making them illegal, not deliberately on their own, but because the opportunity to fix their papers are not there. There is bottlenecks that makes it impossible for them to do so. We're also calling on all foreigners that we should please avail ourselves the opportunities and recognize our stay. It is the right thing to do. It's the important thing to do. We cannot afford to wish it away and we must see that we do it like yesterday so that we will be doing what is right. So we mourn with everyone who have lost their loved ones in this season and period. It's not in our name. It's not the right thing. It's not supposed to be named among us. We pray that God Almighty will have mercy upon us and accept the souls of those who we have lost in this tragedy that have befallen our beloved nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Today in our family series, we are uh, focusing on a topic titled, Remember Your First Love. Remember Your First Love. And we are reading from the book of life, the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse number 4, NIV version. It says, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you have at first. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you have at first. May I begin with this funny story this morning. But in reality, my son was losing my wife here this morning. He remarked, in those days, I was talking with my mother, how he used to lose her hair. My son remarked, and remembered that in his younger age, as a young child, he used to see me uh, losing my wife hair, and he commented on that. Then my wife took over the talk. Uh, as you said, when love was intoxicating him, a lot of good memories were then now recited. She keep on, you know, it's like she was waiting for somebody to trigger her. <laughs> and then I responded, I still love her, but responsibilities have increased or some changes has happened. What can you remember when you met or cotton or when you got married newly? I want to take you back to memory lane this morning. My son took me back to memory lane. My wife took over the topic and elaborated on it more. And I've come to ask you this morning to remember your first love. And I say to you, what can you remember when you met your partner? What can you remember when you were courting? What can you remember when you were dating? What can you remember when you were newly married? I have been married for 28 years. Reality changes must have set in. When you get married, realities begin to set in. The new emotions and now the way you we are used to behave when you are newly married and how you are behaving now 
after some years or some months of marriage or you are just getting married or you just married your young honeymoon there are changes that happens there are realities that must set in yes i've been married for 28 years there are realities of things i used to do before that i do them no more and i want to believe that you who is married for some years some of you have been married for 10 years some of you have been married for 50 years some of you have been married for 70 years i want to take you back to memory lane uh, your emotions when you were newly married is truly not in the same level after many years many homes are broken today because of not reflecting on their first love many homes are broken many brothers and sisters many men of god and women of god are no longer uh, the way their marriage used to be there is a shift and lack of reflection will make it to worsen more and more and which is not good for our homes you got no record then when you were newly married you don't keep record you don't keep malice you don't say remember what you did and what you have not done your omission and your commission you even when your partner apologizes it's like ah, what did you do you didn't do anything you 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 easily forget the bible says love cover a multitude of sin you don't have any record book you don't say this is what you have done this is what you've done even when your partner reminds you of what he or she has done before you don't even remember because you have no record book you are not easily provoked then you know uh, we will watch our marriages a lot of things uh, flesh us up a lot of things we get uh, angry but in those days when you we are in your honeymoons when you are newly married when you we are courting when you are dating you do not get easily provoked in those days you can cook you can wash you can help almost in every area in the family you don't say no this job is not my job you don't say no i can never do this a hold me you can easily and joyfully help in one way or the other in almost in every area in your home you are actively helping to do that no irritation of his or her voice when you are newly married you are looking forward to hear your partner's voice sing like the early morning birds. Her voice, his voice does not irritate you. But now when you hear your partner's voice, there is this anger that seems to come out from your heart. A little levels that have leveled the whole lot. In those days, you compliment each other. You, you, when your wife is working, you come around, you help in the, in, the, in, the, in the kitchen, you come around and say, oh, my dear, well done. Are you the one who have done all this early this morning? When did you wake up? Can you please rest a little bit? You compliment her. When she put on her clothes, you, you, you say, ah, this one is looking too good on you. You compliment him. You, I mean, you say words that are, sweet to the hearing of your partner and even if you make mistake you didn't comment your partner would draw you back and say you are forgetting something and you're like what am i forgetting he said you have not have you not noticed and then you say oh my god i'm sorry you compliment in those days are you still complimenting your partner you give gifts there is no how you would be in love without giving a gift. For God so loved the world that he gave. 
Greater love has no man than this, that a man should give his life for his friends. There is no how you will be in love. You don't give gifts, no matter how small. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was going, the Bible says he give gifts to all men, to men, to people of God, to the children of God. He give them gifts. You cannot be in love without giving gifts. When did you give gifts last to your partner? Can you see how decaying their first love has become? You know, in this part of the world, it's not our custom, our, our culture, but we learn as we relate with other people and other races. Those days you can open the door, a uh, uh, car for your partner, not because your door is bad. Because <laughs> they say, when a black man opens the door for his wife, he said the car door is not good. So he has to push it and kick it. So. He doesn't want that to happen, so he goes and opens. And sometimes he cannot love, so he does something he needs to hook the door with. <laughs> hey. In those days, you can put chairs for your partner to sit down. Even when you go for occasion, you allow your partner, especially your wife, to sit down first before you sit down. When your love was still afresh, you walk together. Have you ever noticed men? They will be very far away and their wife is coming from behind. The Bible says when the children of Israel we are going out from the land of Egypt on their journey because Moses was taking about 4 million people out from the land of Egypt. He was in the front leading with Aaron giving direction to the people of God. And the enemies we are killing the children of Israel from behind. Because there was no enough of them staying behind and staying ahead. When do you walk the same time with your, family, with your partner? When do you hold your partner? When you are walking, you go and sit down in the church. You go and sit down on that uh, conference. You go and sit down on that social program you have been invited. When do you walk down with your partner? So some of us who have car, we leave our partner and walk in. The partner will come later on. You sit different. Your wife sits different. Your first love needs to be changed. Your first love needs to be picked up. When do you hold your partner hand and walking in a gathering and people acknowledge and say, oh, that is his wife. In your first love, there was no infidelity or lust over someone else. When you were newly married, when you were newly dating, when you were courting, when you take that man, that woman home, there was no infidelity. There was no loss of someone else. There's nobody you are eyeing. There's no, nobody you are looking around to check on. The loss of the flesh was not part of you. You were so focused with your partner. That was what was happening in your first love when you first met. You were both transparent in all things. There's no secret. Transparency was your watchword in your relationship with your partner when you were married newly. Are you still transparent? Are you still open to each other? Are there secrets that you have been keeping? Calling us today to go back to our first law. Know this. The man libido, sexual desire, reduces with age and commitment. You know, when your partner is no longer, your husband is no longer sexually active as he used to be, don't tell it that he no longer loves you. 
There are reasons or some other things that can be a contributing factor. As your husband is getting older, he is no longer that German machine because a lot has gone out of him. Remember, he's the one who gives the seed that becomes the children. And so as he begins to age, he is no longer uh, very active as he used to be. And commitments, you know, sometimes as 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 uh, sisters, as ladies, as wives, and as our women in the house, you do not realize how much your partner is carrying on his head. And when he carries this load, he's thinking of the children's school fees. He's thinking of the house to be built at home. He's thinking of family responsibilities. He's thinking of even your own family that needs to be reached out and be helped. He's thinking of friends. He's thinking of the future. He's thinking of how to position the family. He's thinking of how to fulfill his God-given assignment. And he is busy. When he gets busy, it affects him also physically in his body. Be with him and see that you encourage him instead of criticizing him. Man of God told me a story that happened just a few weeks ago in the city over here. As these two couple who are married and they are getting old in age. I don't know what happened. This young man uh, saw this elderly woman over her 80s. And I don't know what a young boy of 30 something will be talking with an old woman on that level. But something happened. And they say they are in love. And the woman begin to go out secretly with the young boy. And she's no longer home on weekends. She makes excuses. She come back late. And the husband suspected that something was going on. And set up uh, our own way of setting up cheaters. And after investigation, it was confirmed that the wife was going out with this elderly, with this younger young boy who uh, probably was, you know, more satisfying to the old woman. And the man traced them, went into the tavern where they were having a good time, shot the security man, go inside, kill the young man who was going out with the wife, kill his wife, and turned the gun on himself, put it on his mouth, and killed himself. Four people dropped dead at the time. The use of estrogens and testosterone, uh, the sex engine of a man or of a woman, can affect uh, sexual ability because of. Uh, the performance uh, will no longer be strong because of age and other factors that affects the partner. On the low, on the ladies, monopause comes in. It can lead to less drive for sex when a woman is on her monopause age. It starts from 40s, 50s, and 51. A woman monopause begin to set in. The season of woman life begin to reduce at that age. And some get into their monopause age earlier. But the most times it starts from the age of 40, the age of 50, and 51. And so if, if, if your wife is now 60 or going to 70 or 55 monopause, most have probably set in. Children and other demands in the woman's life can affect her. The woman is now, you are not only the child that she's caring for, you are children that both of you have given birth to. And she has to get them ready for school. She has to cook for them. She has to clean the house. If she's a working class woman, she goes to work. When she comes back home, she's also going to the kitchen to help. This we are men, all to help. If 
Their wife is a working class and they're working class. Their children are still young. They are not able to help yet in the kitchen. You should understand that this woman is also wearing the same body you are wearing. By the time she comes back to work, she's tired like you. Let it not be said among us as Christians. Uh, the children used to sing, uh, mommy in the kitchen, cooking food, daddy in the lunch, watching TV. No, we should be partners in life and encourage and help each other because nobody that is a firewood, blood flows in the body of your partner and with time he begins to get tired and then he's been exhausted in his or her life. However, it is not an excuse to sleep outside. It's not an excuse if your partner is going through experiences of life or your partner is sick or your partner is age is not on your partner's side or menopause have set in. It's not an excuse to sleep outside. It is not allowed in our Bible, in the God we serve. Old school, learn how and learn new tricks to keep the fire on. I won't be able to speak that much on that today, but when we have a special seminars, old school, but I want to remind you, learn new tricks to keep the fire of your marriage on. Don't let your partner feel that you are seeing somebody else. Because when you are no longer satisfying in every area in your family, your partner begins to think, is there somebody else who you are seeing? Is there anything else that is attracting you? Learn new tricks in order to keep the fire of your marriage going on. You know when you are loved or when you do love. You know, you know when somebody shows you love, you know how you feel. You know you are loved. And then you know when you love somebody, the extra mile you go. And what I have to say to you today is, Go back to the uh, 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 drawing board. Do a reality check of your love life before. Go back to the drawing board so that we will not give occasion to the flesh. Remember your first love. Remember your first love. Remember your first love. You don't have any excuse, brother. You don't have any excuse, sister. Remember your first love. I want us to pray together. Wherever you are watching us today, do you love as you used to love? If not, God is reminding you today to remember your first love to your partner. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Thou who knows the secret of all hearts, I'm bringing that marriage of my brother or my sister of the apostle, the bishop, the pastor, the reverend, the prophet, that is no longer aflame. And today you have reminded us in Revelation chapter 2 verse 4 that you know us, that we should remember our first love, where we should pick back what we have lost. And Father, for any reason that our marriages are no longer aflame as they used to be, you brought this word today to remind us. I pray for that man, for that woman, for that brother, for that a sister, for that my bishop, my pastor, my prophet, oh Lord my God, my fathers in the faith, may those who have been married for ages, those who have been married for 30, 40, 50 years, that they no longer see the need to put a marriage fire on. Father, I pray this morning that as your word has come to us today, that you will touch us and revive our love. Thank you, Almighty Father. We give you glory and praise. Lord, I pray for the young ones who are not yet married. That, oh God, at the fullness of time, as they go into the marriage life, that their marriage will be a blessing. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. And Jesus in the family. Happy, happy home. Oh, happy, happy home. Oh, happy, happy home. And Jesus in the family. Happy, happy home. Happy, happy home. Your marriage shall be a blessing.
Your children surround your table. You will see your children, children, to say the Lord of hosts. Your marriage shall be a blessing. Your children surround your table. You will see your children, children, to say the Lord of hosts.